Hey everybody, this is Tony Tominick and Jerry Spencer. And we're here for another Moment of History R2. And we're winding down our trip on the Lakeshore Electric Railway. We are now slowing to stop. 65. <laughs> so I know to this day, Sherry, in fact, I was driving to 65 today that if I have to tell somebody where to go and I need them to go to the other end of town, I still say stop 65 and it's never going to change. <laughs> well, stop 65, that was a hot spot. It was built, finished right around 1899. Let me tell you first that it was a very, very significant spot insofar as the Lakeshore Electric Railway because there was not only a ticket station there, but car barns were there. In fact, the building uh, was the largest, I, I think they called it the, uh, I call it the crown jewel of the Lakeshore Electric System. That when they built that building, uh, which by the way, if you go and look at it, you can still see the original structure. Uh, but that building um, really changed Northeast Ohio, certainly in this region. But that location drew people from far and wide because they all wanted to party. There we go. I'm not saying booze. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to have to start saying booze because, you know, it, that, that's going to weave its way into all of this. It always does. <laughs> so, so it was uh, billed as an opportunity for an outing at Avon Beach Park. It actually had a, a variety of names, most commonly known as Beach Park, but sometimes it was called Avon Beach Park. In fact, it's on maps as Beach Park. Yeah. You can get old maps, and it doesn't say Avon Lake, it doesn't say, it says Beach Park. And it had its own post office. And people could send letters to folks who lived in that area, and they would put right on the envelope, Beach Park, Ohio. And the postal carriers knew where to take it. So the, the Beach Park Post Office was not the first post office in Evo Lake. There were formerly post offices, but they were <coughs> out of people's homes. And this one was the first one that was not out of somebody's home. It so it's like an official hard brick and mortar kind of thing. Yeah, it, well, it was. <clears throat> yes, it was. So I'll bet you're wondering who all came to Beach Park, aren't you? No, not one bit. No. Well, then I won't tell you. Okay, we'll see everybody next week. <laughs> well, there really was a short one. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, who, who was showing up on that uh, Lakeshore Electric Rail car? Well, let's start off with church groups. There were a lot of church groups and Sunday school classes that were drawn to the shores to enjoy a nice after Sunday afternoon picnic and play some games with their friends and enjoy the gorgeous breeze. You know, I have to say that uh, to this day, we all still enjoy those same breezes and, in fact, sunsets and sunrises. Yep. But the shore also drew other groups, uh, such as farmers, groups of farmers that would come out and they would have uh, a fun day. And the feature entertain well, not entertainment, game, the feature for that day would be catch a greased pig. Catch a greased pig. Yeah, I've heard rumors of those things going on. So I suppose if you caught it, you probably got to keep it. What do you think? <laughs> I guess. I, you know, I, I know we're, we joke about this, but the fun was different then. I have a photograph. I'm sure I'll be able to find it and use it. But of people playing the leapfrog at Beach Park. Yes, I have seen that, and I know what you're talking about. And, and, you know, speaking of farmers coming, I have to, to go back and mention that Beach Park was significant to Avon Lake's evolution because once, that, once it was established, it was opportunity for employment for a lot of people in this area. It drew a lot of people, different skill sets, mechanics, conductors, motormen, ticket agents, and even cleaning people. Well, there are also employee picnics that went on there, and Higby's is a classic example of that. Higby's would treat their employees to picnic day at the beach park, and the ladies were all dressed up in their finery and their hats and their 
long dresses, and then we'd come out and enjoy a day along Lake Erie Shores here at Avon Lake. And, and everybody was dressed. I mean, I've, I've, we've, we've seen some of those photographs. Everybody is dressed in their finery, as you say. And today, we can't get people to wear good clothes to church. <laughs> yeah. But these or, people were, go ahead. Or not to wear their pajamas in Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But these people um, were dressed to the nines, if you will. Uh, ties, white shirts, dresses, hats, and that was a day at the beach. And, and those Higby ladies, those hats that were almost looked like it was a hat competition. <laughs> Another organization that hosted their picnic there, and I don't think you're going to be at all surprised by this one, is the Ohio Wine and Spirit Association. <laughs> You know, it's back to what we've said all along in 19 episodes. It's all about, all the, about booze. the booze. It's all about the booze. Let's get out to the lake, get drunk. <laughs> so we also had the horseshoers. Horseshoers. I, I don't mean the horseshoe pitching competition people. I mean the actual blacksmiths. who. Uh, so, make, uh, so the people who actually, they came out here for an outing? Yep, they came out here for an outing. And so did physicians, so did druggists, and baseball enthusiasts. Why were the baseball people coming out? I could see why druggists, and no, I can't see why any of those people were coming out. <laughs> but, but why baseball? <clears throat> because reputedly, Lorraine County, Avon Beach specifically, had the best baseball fields in all of Lorraine County. Wow. Yeah. Competition cool. was fierce. Yeah. And, and, you know, they would throw it on the gauntlet in ah. the news. Here's an example for you. This, this actually appeared in one of the old Cleveland newspapers back in the 1900s. The leaders would like to play the VPCs Sunday, July 10th at Avon Beach. Answer through this paper. So there are some serious beatdowns. You know, it takes me back to a time when we used to have beer games uh, because I do have a little bit of alcohol in my family lineage. Uh, oh, yeah. And we had beer games over at Sunset Park where you'd get a keg of beer and, you know, Ted's team would play Spanik's team or the Avon Lake Pharmacy. And it was all, and I've got old stills of the, of the actual events, but you know, that's how it was. You had beer games. I don't, do people still do that? Maybe they should. <laughs> maybe they should. Yeah, maybe they should. And for the ladies, they could play too, and they could have wine games. Um, I, uh, maybe. Some, there are some really good female softball players. Not saying anything about that. I'm just saying, I'm not sure you want to get a bunch of juiced up women playing softball. <laughs> Maybe you do. Maybe you do. Maybe you do. <laughs> so let me tell you about the Elks, too. When the Elks would come. We have Elks the, in Ohio? Elks, the organization. Not oh, the Elks, not, okay. the, not the. I, I don't think the Lakeshore Electric Railway let animals ride on the trains, but that raises an inter interesting question about how they got the greased pig. Yeah, they, they had to get him somewhere. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Okay. You know what? All right. All right. I, I give that to you. All right. So, so back to the Elks Association organization. They would come out here and for their celebrations, their party picnic, they would have bagpipers playing along the lake shore and Scottish dances. That just sound yeah. beautiful. Yeah, it does. It does. Um, the sound of bagpipes is amazing. And, and I, you know, I just can imagine after seeing photographs of, of that happening right here in Avon Lake or in Beach Park, you know. Very, very yeah. cool. Yeah. I mean, even if you weren't an elk, you'd probably want to come just to kind of sit along the fringe and listen to the music and enjoy the dancing and watch Maybe, dancers. Yeah. Maybe they even had bassoons. Oh, now you've got my attention. <laughs> <laughs> so Beach Park also had family-friendly activities, and it wasn't just all about the the booze okay they had things for the kids too they had teeter totters uh seesaws whatever you want to call them and they had a beautiful carousel 
this carousel was unfortunately uh, destroyed by a terrible storm. The newspaper reported that the value of the destroyed carousel was $1,000. Now keep in mind, this is early 1900s. So that had to be one spectacular carousel that was Well, there. And, and to have a carousel there, I, I guess it just, it never entered my mind that when we said it was Beach Park, that the park included things like a carousel and ball diamonds. It's, it's, it's amazing. It really is. A lot of people probably don't know about this. Yeah. So they, they had the, uh, the carousel on a boardwalk, and they offered boating, swimming, bowling, dancing, of course, and dining. Fabulous place to go and have dinner, like you were talking about your frog's legs. <laughs> frog legs, yeah. They were a big deal back then. But, you know, if we could just blow up the power plant and build that back again, we'd be millionaires. Uh, you might want to edit that, too, because if something happens, is that power plant? Yeah, really. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's say something unfortunate happened to the power plant. <laughs> Purely by chance. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably in a force of nature of, of uh -huh. some sort. Uh -huh. like, a, like a dare show comes in and wipes <laughs> it out. So I had also read one source that said that one of the attractions at Beach Park was, you ready for this? A fortune teller. Really? Yeah. Madam X or something like that? Something like that. <laughs> I don't know what her name was, but, you know, you could go to Beach Park and have your fortune told. Doesn't it make you wish you, would, you were around then? <laughs> I mean, really. Well, I've seen the swimsuits that they had to wear, and I'm not so sure that would be enjoyable, but okay. I wouldn't be able to wear one of those. They had the, what, the striped ones that went down for men that were like knee length or something. And the and the women's swim costumes, the bathing costumes, they call them, made out of wool. I mean, I don't you know, imagine climbing up out of the water. <laughs> the pool is soaked and it's pulling down, and there's what? nothing. You're, you're carrying an extra what, 25, 30 pounds, or or so you think. Ay ay ay. But before we wrap this up, you know, we have to talk about one more thing: the uh, the booze. And, oh, you know, yeah. sometimes that created a little problem because on the one hand, you had the Sunday school and family groups that were traveling back and forth to Beach Park. And then you had maybe the theater goers or the dancers, campers, what have you, who like to imbibe while on the Lakeshore Electric Railway. And so they found it necessary to create what they called drunk cars. Yeah. Yeah. You can read all about those in Harry Christensen's wonderful book, Lakeshore Electric Railway book, and he talks about the creation of the drunk cars. The train at Lakeshore Electric and Beach Park were um, clearly a, a huge part of the development of this region, not just Avon Lake or Beach Park, but, you know, Norwalk and, and Fremont and Lorraine and Elyria. I mean, this this electric railway that we just take for granted, I guess, in many ways, was really, really um, a main reason that uh, we developed as a community and as a region. Well, you want to, uh, any last minute thoughts before I rudely before you, hop in, before you hop on the drunk car? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll just let you go in peace. Well, I want to thank everybody for, uh, and Sherry, Every time I listen to you tell stories, um, I, I transport myself back into those situations. You do a great job. You do a lot of research, and I appreciate you willing your willingness to share them with us. But um, until next time, this is Tony Tominick and Jerry Spencer. Ta-ta for now. <laughs>